What's happening guys, UFC 299 this week. It is a massive card. Pay-per-view, doing the breakdown, you know how it is. Mate, this card is absolutely stacked, top to bottom. We're only gonna do the main card. There's so many good fights uh, throughout the whole card, the, you know, the undercard and the early prelims, all of them. It is absolutely stacked, but we will do the main card. You've got guys like Peter Yan, Song Yadong, Michael Venom Page. You know, oh man, like it's a Kevin Holland, Poirier, obviously Sean O'Malley. It's a, it's a stacked card. So we're, let's do the main card because there's so much to talk about just there. So let's get into it. Peter Yan and Song Yadong. So that's a, that's a fun fight. Both great strikers, both durable, both powerful. Song Yadong obviously uh, moves well and is very powerful. But I feel like, uh, you know, Peter Yan obviously showed his defensive boxing. Oh man, that's an interesting fight. That is a fun fight. You know, Peter Yan's uh, my guy and I know what he's uh, capable of. So, uh, you know, I think, I think stylistically as well, it's, it's not bad. Even though Song, Yad Song Yadong is that good and I feel like he's a big threat to a lot of the people in that division, uh, most people in that division, in fact, I just feel like stylistically, this isn't too bad of a, uh, of a fight for Peter Yan. His defensive pressure, his defensive boxing, I think for someone powerful like uh, Song Yadong, he's gonna go very well for him. I think this is a, a great fight for him, especially because not many people would wanna fight Song Yadong. Uh, I think this one, obviously, after a couple of losses for Peter Yan, this will put him right back up there in, the, in title contentions or you know back on the top echelon where, you know, you need to start giving the, these guys respect uh, and at least talk about them not being too far from a title shot. And he's a former champ, uh, so you know they might, he might be in them conversations anyway, but I think this is a fun fight. So again, I'm gonna back my guy. I think he's gonna be ready to go out there and do his thing. I don't think he needs to change too much. I feel like uh, maybe with other fighters, he might need to work on some things. With this fight, I think he could fight the fight he usually does, and stylistically, that will be okay. So I am gonna pick Peter Yarn. Uh, can he get the finish? It's a free rounder. I think they're both durable, they're both tough. I think it's gonna be a decision win for Peter Yarn. Oh yeah, Gilbert Burns, Jack Dell. I didn't mention that uh, earlier on. Another absolute banger. Uh, obviously fellow Aussie, uh, Jack Dell. I did a bit of training with him uh, not too long ago. Uh, mate, and Burns, very exciting, very tough, durable. This is a fun fight. Uh, Jack Della. You know, obviously you don't want to give too much away, but what do we all know? We all know he's got great boxing. We all know he's durable. Uh, we know he's pretty good everywhere. But, um, you know, obviously from training with him, he's very well-rounded. You know what I mean? He's very well-rounded. He's very uh, clue. He's got like a, the fight IQ. You know, his body awareness. He just knows where he's meant to put himself. Even if he's never been in a position before, he makes the right adjustments on the spot. He's that type of fighter that um, just mechanically knows where he should be and where he shouldn't. So I think that is gonna be crucial for a fight like this with Burns. Burns is obviously his higher level grappler. Um, he's strong, he's gonna to wanna to push you to the wall, wanna to, to try and get you to the ground. I think that is gonna be pretty hard for someone like Jack Della. I think uh, Burns might find it hard. And I love obviously both fighters. Uh, Jack Della being a fellow Aussie and a training partner, I know him pretty well. Obviously I'm gonna back my guy, Burns. Everyone loves Burns, so you know you don't ever want to bet against him just because he's such a top dude, and he's obviously a great fighter. But I think uh, for the story and for where you know Jack Della is at right now, I think this is a great fight for him. Can he finish it? Because they're both going to go at it. It's a three rounder. I, they're both durable. They're both tough. You know, um, Jack Della knows how to finish though as well. This is a tricky one, man. Uh, I think it's going to be a decision win. I think it's going to be a decision win. Obviously, I can see a finish, but I think the safest bet out of respect to both fighters is they're both durable, they're both that good that um, they won't make too big of mistakes to, to get finished. So I'm going to go with Jack Della, decision win. Kevin Holland, Michael Venom Page. Michael Venom Page is going to have his debut in the UFC, and what a way to do it uh, with someone like Kevin Holland. Both exciting fighters. Both are going to bring it. It is going to be a stand-up fight. Obviously, Kevin Holland can take it to the ground. I haven't seen too much of Michael Venom Page on the ground. He's probably good, I don't, don't know, but we all know he's a very exciting, very creative striker. And same as Kevin Holland. So we know that uh, this is gonna be an exciting fight. We know they're both gonna bring it. They're both gonna be game. They're both gonna be confident and not be shocked or, you know, they're both gonna be composed in there. They're both gonna be uh, comfortable. 
uh, not freaking out uh, and fight what's in front of them. I don't think they're going to get themselves in a position where they're going to, you know, whether they do things crazy or do the wrong things, that's a, I feel like it's going to be purely by, by choice and by excitement and them just trying to, you know, they're the type of fight, that, that's their type of style, right? They're going to go for things that some people probably wouldn't. Uh, could that lead to finishes? Yeah. Do I think this fight is going to be a finish? I do. I think uh, they're both durable. I think they're both uh, that good that they can, can go to the decision. But I think they're that exciting um, and they're going to want to put on a show and we're going to be in for a treat that there's going to be a finish there. I think, look, man, I like uh, Kevin Holland. I like uh, MVP as well. I think just for the story, I feel like him coming over, I think he, I think he can get the job done. I think um, Michael Venom Page, he's uh, striking, is, is a high level. Uh, even though, you know, I think... Uh, Kevin Holland is probably more on the dangerous side rather than highest level technique, which is both obviously very good to have in the, in the UFC, uh, both styles. But I think that that high level that you're going to see from Michael Venom Page, I think that could play a big part in, in uh, getting the victory in this one. So it's a fun one, man. This is exciting. So you can see me you're like, where's this going? I will lean towards a finish for Michael Venom, Venom Page. I don't know who's a favorite in this one. Um, sports bet, go check on sports bet app. See who the favorite is. If someone's a hot favorite, maybe go the other guy because anything can happen in this one. But I'm gonna have to lean towards MVP for a finish. TKO, KO, most likely. Co-main, Poirier, obviously a massive star. Uh, Co-maining against uh, Benoit. It's going to be an exciting fight. Obviously, the star power, you know, you're looking at Poirier. He's a star. Massive fight in his co-main. Uh, you know, Benoit's not there yet, but, I mean, he's very exciting. Very exciting fighter, very good. You know, we all know that, uh, you know, Poirier's proved himself against the highest level. Uh, so that's going to be a, you know, it's a big, big, uh, a big fight for Benoit. Massive fight. The position this fight yeah, it puts him in this, you know, this fight. The position he's in for this fight is incredible. He gets a win, that gets him right up there. Massive opportunity for Benoit. Uh, more of a risk sort of fact, the fight for, for Poirier, in the fact that obviously he's lower in the, in the rankings and he's just as dangerous as the guys in the top. So, you know, these are also credit to Poirier for taking this fight on. I think uh, this needs to happen in that lightweight division. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of times it's the top guys just fighting each other. Now we're getting some of the other guys finding their way to the top, uh, some fresh blood. So uh, let's see how this goes. Who am I gonna lean towards? Are we gonna see Benoit do okay and then the little lift up the shorts, uh, Poirier style, like, oh, uh, it's on now, let's go, and then just turn it on. And sometimes when you see him do that, he really can, because when he puts his combos together and when he finds his ranges and gets comfortable, um, he looks great. Usually he, he does take risks early, Poirier, I've thought. Um, and I've seen him not do that in his last couple of fights. I've seen him uh, play it a little bit more safe. Um, obviously he got caught in his last fight, but I mean, he didn't go out there just trying to throw the punches and find his range that way through offense. He, he, you know, he felt it out a bit more safely. He, the risk management was a little bit better at finding his, uh, finding his range and finding uh, his shots and whatnot, which I think is going to be crucial for someone like Benoit. So I think Poirier in this one, and I think he's the underdog in this. Sports bet, I'll check that. Go check, uh, go check the odds on these ones. Poirier, I'm going to go. I think this could be a finish as well. I think we might see the little pants pull up and uh, he goes in and gets the finish. Massive win for uh, Poirier, again, taking a risk and uh, getting on top. So that's gonna be an interesting one. It's gonna be a fun fight, definitely. Here we go. Main event, Sean O'Malley, Cheeto Vera. Interesting fight. On paper and what I've seen, who do I lean towards? I lean towards Sean O'Malley. You know, I'm gonna say, you know, Pretty comfortably, I'd say that. But then you look at their fight, they've already fought, right? So you've got to give that respect where Cheeto's already beat him. Uh, do I feel like he can do the same things to Sean? I think that's gonna be hard. Um, I know he's already beat Sean, but I think uh, Sean, look, Sean's striking is, is high level. I think it is pretty underrated. I think uh, people know it's good, but I don't think uh, people understand how good it is. His, uh, his uh, shot selections, his variety and strikes, angles, distance management, 
um, you know, his eye, all of that is, is top notch, very, very high level. And he's still young, he's still in his prime, he's probably still finding his prime, you know what I mean? It just depends, uh, you know, now he's champion. Is he still uh, putting the hard yards in, you know what I mean? Sometimes, even though I felt like he's already had a taste of the, maybe not the championship lifestyle, but the, the famous star life, right? He's already been a bit of a celebrity, he's already had a big name, he's already had a lot of love, and he, you've seen him evolve. Him being champion should be the same, right? You know, not many people can uh, get around being champion in that lifestyle, it can change people. I didn't, I didn't change, I was able to be the same person, that's why I felt like I evolved, evolved so much through, my, uh, through the championships and through the defences and whatnot. And that's still going to be the case now. Is that going to be the same for Sean O'Malley? We will see. But uh, as I said, he's already have a, ha, had, a, had a taste of stardom. So I think we need to give that respect in the fact that we've seen him evolve and look great against guys like Aljo, uh, Peter Yarn. So uh, you've got to give him uh, credit where credit's due. So who am I leaning towards? I'm going to have to lean towards Sean O'Malley. I think uh, his striking is going to be too much. I know Cheeto is going to want to keep it standing. I think Cheeto has to keep it standing. I think uh, Sean O'Malley is even dangerous on the ground. I think he's going to be hard to take down. I think Sean can uh, give him problems even there. He's, uh, he can throw some nice submissions off his back and he's pretty creative there. So I think it's going to be a stand-up fight, which is exciting. Uh, you know Cheeto is going to bring it. I just think the movement and that's going to be too much. And I think knowing uh, Sean O'Malley is going to look for the finish, he's creative and he's got a good eye, I think it's going to be a finish for Sean O'Malley. So uh, that is my pick for the main event. Sean O'Malley by, by finish. It could be a submission, uh, but I think it's going to be a... a, a because even if he hurts him and takes him to the ground, I can't see him looking for a submission. I can see him, uh, you know, wanting that highlight reel finish and uh, going for the big KO and uh, putting him to sleep through punches rather than a submission. But a stack card, uh, let me know your thoughts, let me know your picks, let me know if I'm completely wrong or completely right, let me know if that's a good enough breakdown for y'all, let me know if I should do even more research next time. Put it all in the comments. I appreciate the support. I thank you all every single time and I'm thanking you again. Till next time, enjoy yourselves.